Hey everyone, God bless you and best wishes for a blessed new year. May it be attended by incredible spiritual accomplishment and the acquisition of the kingdom of God for you, for your whole family. My reflection for Tech Tuesday today, I've entitled Spiritual Technologies. And I'd like to begin this reflection uh, in the scriptures, especially as we see in the patriarchal histories as recorded in Genesis, the development of both earthly and spiritual technologies. So if you look at Genesis chapter 4, there you'll find uh, the account of the struggle between Cain and Abel. Uh, Abel will end up physically dead, Cain will end up spiritually dead. And then the God seer and prophet Moses recounts the descendants of Cain. And it's in that line of descendants that we come to a, a notorious, an infamous man named Lamech. Lamech is a, a boaster. In fact, he's, we're given his words, boasting about killing someone. He's a murderer. He's also the first recorded polygamist uh, in the scriptures. In fact, Genesis, after the fall of man, recorded in, in the third chapter of Genesis, by the time you get to the end of Genesis in chapter 15, you've seen just about every type of corruption of the human family possible, every type of um, sexual sin, rape, polygamy, pro, uh, contraception, just horrible, horrible things one after the other, including polygamy in the life of Lamech. Lamech is important for our discussion because Lamech had two wives, his first wife, Ada, and his second wife, Zillah, and their children are recorded in Genesis as being the fathers of particular technologies. So for instance, let's look first at Ada. Ada gave birth to two sons, Jabal and Jubal. Jabal was the father of um, the technology of um, nomadic herding. So he had a very important role in the development of how you care for livestock and animals, which of course is extremely important for the sustenance of men. That's Jabal. Jubal was the father of musical, the technology, the art of musical instruments, making all sorts of types of instruments, which are conducive to the creating of beautiful music, uh, music that serves man, either relieving his grief or encouraging him uh, when he has to be aroused. Uh, music has been precious to mankind throughout human history. That's the technology, the earthly technologies that come from uh, Ada's line. Zilla gives birth to a man named Tubal Cain, and Tubal Cain is described as uh, the father of all iron works and, and metal work. St. John Chrysostom calls him a coppersmith, the first coppersmith. And sadly, that technology is what drove the development of the earthly technology of weaponry. And weaponry, the technologies of war, have been the central source for research and development and developing all sorts of earthly technologies throughout the human race. Uh, our history, sadly, is uh, is war-centered. There's no escaping it. And a lot of technology is simply man's effort to find a way to kill his enemy better and quicker and more efficiently. And this is where money goes in. And you want to see that in existence today? Look at the budget of the United States of America and how much money goes into uh, the development of uh, warfare and technolo technological warfare. So here you have it. You have this uh, clear appearance of these earthly technologies recorded for us in Genesis coming from very questionable sources, right? This is Cain's line. These are the, the sons of a horrible man, Lamech, and from that rotten source come the development of earthly technologies. That should tell you something. Now, of course, there are more legitimate earthly technologies. St. John Chrysostom in his commentary on this chapter points out that you can see the development of nomadic herding under J-Ball and musical instruments under Jubal. Uh, you can see uh, even uh, in the cases of some metalwork, uh, you can see God's providential care for the needs of man to help relieve the burden of human existence on the earth. Of course, it's also very mixed with uh, corrupt technologies. 
earthly technology absolutely grabs the heart of modern man, especially secular man. Secular man, since he doesn't have any explicit affirmation or commitment to the invisible, which means the most important things in life are bl he's blind to, is only focused upon earthly technologies and gets so excited about everything new, presuming that it has to be an advance for man and something better is going to come. The study, the academic study of earthly technologies is something that uh, has consistently grown, especially for the last 500 years. It's exploding today with all sorts of subsets of the study of technologies. What I'm going to show you here is a, a wonderful five-volume encyclopedia, a history, really, of uh, numerous earthly technologies. Oh, what do you say? I'd say about 2,000 to 1,500 pages. This is a, a series published by Oxford, by Clarendon Press at Oxford, and uh, was published in the mid-1950s. I think the last volume came out in 58. It's a valuable text, not just to uh, orient one towards the, his the development of earthly technologies, but to know a history uh, of anything, especially science, is extremely important because modern man is so blind to the limitations of science and earthly technologies that to know its history uh, helps someone be sober. It helps someone recognize that uh, we've thought we've known things certainly many times before, uh, and then some radical paradigm shift happens, and we recognize we don't know uh, what we thought we know. Of course, when you get completely ahistorical, when you become ignoramuses, and the flash of the immediate becomes extremely precious to you, and you have no perspective that history gives you, then you become uh, hyper uh, like you saw during the COVID experience, where we took a untested vaccine <laughs> and talked about it like we knew what we were talking about. And we're finding out, aren't we, that uh, we didn't quite know what we thought we know, what we, what we thought we knew. So much for earthly technologies. Within earthly technologies, there are the more legitimate and the less legitimate. But let me talk to you about uh, a different line, not Cain's line and the technologies of the earth, but look at Seth's line. Seth, remember, given by God as a consolation to Cain, to uh, Adam and Eve, the loss of their son Abel. Seth apparently makes no contribution to earthly technologies at all. Moses tells us nothing about the great uh, contributions of Seth's line to earthly technologies. However, from Seth's line comes the great patriarch Noah, who was an incredible technician himself, a, a master artisan of spiritual technology. It's through Noah, the patriarch Noah, that the ark is built. God guides him. We have a God-inspired technology, a spiritual technology, and this technology is designed for the great benefit of mankind, not to reconcile man to earthly things, not to help him dig better, raise crops better, fight better, make better music. No, this spiritual technology is designed to reconcile man to the most important thing, which is the judgment of God. In Noah's case, the coming flood. Spiritual technologies reconcile one to men, uh, reconcile men rather to God, reconcile men to the, the acquisition of virtue, the conquering of passions, the, uh, the, uh, the assumption and embrace of truth, deliverance from error and lies and conflicts within and without. This is what the, con the contribution of spiritual technology is. And for believers, for we who love God, for Christian people, spiritual technology is of far greater influence, far greater interest, and we pursue spiritual technology far more aggressively than we should pursue earthly technologies. We should really be thrilled by the spiritual technology. This is why the great patriarch Abraham, who was a master of earthly technology, remember this man was a builder, this man knew how to take care of animals. He knew how to grow crops. He was extremely wealthy because of those gifts. He was a warrior. He certainly knew how to use the uh, technology of weapons. He was extremely successful in war. But his true ambition was spiritual technology. He became a master of faith, the father of the faithful. And he sought the city that had foundations built by God in the heavens. He considered himself a stranger on the earth. He didn't use his knowledge of technology to fall in love with the earth. 
Rather, he elevated spiritual technology, the growth of faith in himself, confidence in God, virtue, and he sought for the coming of Christ. And Jesus said Abraham saw his coming, his day, and rejoiced and was glad. In the church, which is prefigured by the ark, we have the very center of spiritual technology. Uh, the church is the Silicon Valley, so to speak, of the technology of the soul. The church guides man in reconciling with the hardest of all problems, reconciling with God, reconciling with the contradiction in ourselves, our own conscience, overcoming enslavement to sins and the devils. And we have our own precious volumes. For instance, I'm holding the Evergetinos. I could easily be holding the five volumes of the Philokolia or the 12 volumes of the Synoxarian. These precious texts are the texts that guide us in the acquisition of spiritual technology, of how to believe in God truly, on how to relate to him and true faith and repentance, on how to conquer our enemies, especially the passions and the old man, how to acquire love, how to transform our minds into light, how to establish the virtues uh, in our life such that we can come to the judgment day without shame. The Evergetinos uh, is a collection of the writings of the Desert Fathers. Uh, this is in the English language, a wonderful edition. In the Eastern Church, we collect the writings and teachings of the Desert Fathers which guide us in our spiritual life we collect them according to theme. So these volumes, each of these four volumes, contains 50 uh, hypotheses, which are affirmations about spiritual principles, and then examples from the Desert Fathers of what this means, each of these mean. So 200 in, in total. In Western editions uh, produced by the Latin Church, uh, the Desert Fathers are usually presented uh, according to author or to this or that particular desert father alphabetically from A to Z, from Ammon, say, to Zeno. It's been the joy of uh, Patristic Nectar Publications to provide texts on spiritual technology like the Synoxarian, like the Psalter, uh, like the Philokalia in high quality professionally recorded venues for free to our people. We've done this through the generosity of our donors. We're trying to do the same with the Evergetinos. Um, I contacted the copyright, the owners of the copyright of uh, this series, but they would not release uh, permission for, for us to do that. I think they may have that uh, interest themselves, more power to them. I hope that they can br bring them out. We may need to commission uh, our, a translation of the Evergetinos ourselves into the English language and then professionally record it. One way or another, may God make it available uh, in a wide array of uh, means to the people of God. But do, dear ones, do care about the technology that is truly worthy, which is spiritual technology. Pursue that. Develop competence in matters of the soul of eternity in relationship to God and his kingdom, and you will never regret it. God be with you.